Hi, welcome to the Wildflower Magic Podcast. My name is Katie. I'm coming to you from Virginia, where I live with my partner in our brand new house that we just bought, along with our six animals. You can see one of them sleeping quite peacefully behind me. (laughs) That's Ashes. I have three giant dogs, two cats, and a bunny. They are all in this room with me, so if there's a lot of background noise, I'm not sure exactly how much the microphone is going to pick up and how much it's going to drown out, but if there's background noise, it's because I have six animals within three feet of me. So, (laughs) hi, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I have been putting off starting this podcast for several years, actually, because... I really wanted to have this podcast to be able to connect and be part of the community because I love watching other people and I love having the opportunity to meet people that I really wouldn't have met otherwise. Um, I think that the knitting community we have is so, so cool and such a great way to make lasting friendships. So I'm really excited to be a part of that. I kept putting it off because I felt like I didn't have enough interesting things to talk about. (laughs) Um, I used to work in mental health. in in crisis with youth specifically. It was a very busy and very demanding job. I was on call 24 seven and it was, it was a lot. And so I didn't really have the brain power to devote to knitting a lot or keeping up with new pattern releases or recording or any of those things. And so I put it off. Now I'm taking a break from mental health and I actually work at my local yarn store. So I have a lot of things to talk about now. (laughs) I have a lot of things to talk about and a lot of time to talk about it. So I figured now is probably the best time. With that being said, I I kind of want this to be an easy, fun way to connect with you. I don't really want this to be uh, an obligation with a bunch of boxes that I have to check. So I don't know how consistent I'm going to be with a schedule or how rigid I'm going to be with the details of the show notes. It'll kind of ebb and flow with my energy levels and my time. Um... I I really don't want that to hinder me being able to just sit down and connect with you. So if I have the energy to record, but not a whole lot of energy to do the show notes and all of that stuff, then I still want to be able to sit down and just record and chat with you. So that's kind of the mentality that we're going into this year. (laughs) I just really want to connect with more people and have a good time. So I hope you have something yummy to drink. I'm drinking coffee. Usually it's almost always going to be coffee. Let's get started. So I'll start with what I'm wearing. This is the Curia shawl by Tani Gore. I knit this several years ago out of Fun Guy. And this bright green is the March 2020 colorway, both from Emma's yarn. So I believe they were both an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon blend. I love the little eyelet details through here. Very subtle. This was a very easy project to make, which is my favorite. I love, I love nice, easy, mindless projects. Um, I love this shawl because it feels very spring. It's very mossy. Um, kind of reminds me of being in the woods after it rains, which actually it rained all night last night. So this is kind of the bright, vivid greens that my yard is in right now. Um, Yeah, so I made this a while ago. It is on my Ravelry page. I'm really bad about updating things on Ravelry. I'm trying to be better because now that I work at the yarn store and people ask me all the details about my knits instead of just, did you make that? (laughs) Like non-knitters do. Um, I've had to pull up my Instagram feed multiple times to try to get all of the details that I don't remember, but this was from 2020 and I post a lot. So (laughs) it took a hot second to figure out what the yarns were called. I remembered Fun Guy, but I did not remember March 2020. So I'm trying to do better about updating my Ravelry so that I have all of that information for when people do ask me questions like that. So I'll try to be better about that, but no promises. Anyways, let's get into what I'm working on. So I'll start with my socks first. I am making just a pair of vanilla socks. My vanilla sock recipe for me is 64 stitches on a US size 1, 2.25 millimeter. I do 9 inch circular needles. I usually use Chiago. Actually, I always use Chiago. Um, This is the socks that I'm making. Look at this yarn. (laughs) 
it is so bright and so much fun this is by twisted ambition yarn this is my tag and this is called rainbow graffiti this is a 75% superwash merino 25% nylon it's their sweet sock base um this yarn and my hair actually glow under black lights I learned that this yarn glows under black lights because I took it with me to the sub ball that my partner and I went to last weekend and during the admiral speech <laughs> I noticed that my yarn was glowing <laughs> so very very cool I was very excited about it um, I was gonna do a patterned sock for this I kind of alternate between just vanilla like stockinette and um, just a nice easy to memorize pattern and I just bought like six sock patterns this week. <laughs> kind of went on a spree. Um, but this yarn is so bright and so vivid that I didn't really want a texture to be competing with that. I just want the yarn to... The personality of this sock is this yarn. So we're just going to go with that. I'm very excited to wear them. They're so bright and happy. I am also working on another pair of socks. These are for my partner, Alan. Alan is the most knitworthy person I've ever met. <laughs> he gets so excited when I give him socks and that's just super motivating for me to make him more socks. So he's also a really bad enabler. <laughs> um, I took him into the yarn store that I work at a little while ago because I just we were out running errands and I just needed to stop in and pick something up. And he ended up picking out several skeins of yarn for projects that he wanted me to make for him. And so we left with a whole bag full of yarn that I was not planning on getting. <laughs> but whatever, that's fine. He gets very excited about it. So I'm very excited to make it for him. Um, so the socks, the sock yarn that he picked out this time is, this is the main color. This is... Don't Rock the Jukebox by Twisted Ambition Yarns, again, so it's their Sweet Sock 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon Base. Um, yeah, Don't Rock the Jukebox. And then the contrast color that he chose was this Fall Orange by Sheep Graffiti. Sheep Graffiti is the owner of the yarn store that I work at, so a very local to me yarn dyer. Um, fall Orange, and this... Sheep Graffiti's yarns are, um, or at least the space that she does her minis in, is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. The, the mix, mesh, mix match of bases like that, that similar, doesn't bother me. <laughs> it bothers some people, but it does not bother me at all. So this is a 20 gram mini. Alan sucks. The heels and toes usually take about seven grams for each sock and so I did just over two and a half grams which was about six or seven rows on the cuff before I switched to the main color just because I really like having that pop of color at the top as well um so I did I cast on Allen socks on a size zero needle for the cuff and then when I get done with the cuff I'll switch to a size one also Chiabu, also Niner Circular, so that's my favorite. Um, the pattern that I'm using for these socks is called Brick Socks by Sarah Dawn's Designs. It is, I'm test knitting it for her right now, so it's not out yet, um, but it was inspired by brick walls, like that kind of pattern, so I think that it'll look really, really cool in this orangey, reddy, browny color. <laughs> I think that'll look really nice. Alan is very excited about it. He loves the way that this is knitting up. Um, actually, he hasn't seen the two together yet because I did this this morning and he's been at work all day. So um, I am really excited about it. I really, really like it. One of the things that I did was I don't like changing color on purl stitches because you can see the purl bumps in the opposite color. So I did just a row of plain knitting right here where I switched colors. That row is not in rib, that row is in plain stockinette. Just because I don't want to see the pearl bumps on every other stitch, like the orange. So, I snuck in a row of just knit stitches, and you really can't tell, and it doesn't really affect the stretch. It's just a design feature that I really like. Um, 
So I cast on 72 stitches. The pattern calls for... She calls for the cuff to be a certain number of inches. I don't usually measure my cuffs in inches. I usually just do 25 rounds for his cuffs. He is very tall, so he has very large feet. I think he wears like a size 13, but he's very thin. So I do the cuff really tight. Um, I'm doing a one by one ribbing. The pattern calls for two by two, but one by one's a little bit tighter. So I do a really tight cuff and a really long cuff, and then I switch up to the for the legs, just so that they stay up on him a little bit better. Um, the she calls for a certain number of inches. I usually just do 25 rounds, so I'm just going to kind of see how many rounds it takes to do as many inches as she calls for, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but I'm really excited about how the colors are, are coming out. Um, he is very excited about it, which makes me even more excited, so I'll be working on those. And then my last project that I have going on the needles right now is my shawl project. I typically only have a couple of projects going at a time. I used to be a monogamous knitter. I'm no longer a monogamous knitter. <laughs> um, I used to be monogamous, but now I usually have a pattern that I either have to think about a lot or that's really big so it's not super portable. And then I have like a patterned sock and a vanilla sock or a, or a plain stock and net hat or, or something like that that I really don't have to think about that I can take when I go get coffee or when I'm at the shop and I have 10 minutes to sit down and and you know knit with a friend or something I don't want to have to even think so I just pick it up and it's stuck in it in the round is really what it is um this is my shawl that I have going on right now this is what the fade by Andrea Mallory um I need a bigger cord <laughs> I have not gotten a bigger cord I work I don't I don't have an excuse um I work at a yarn store and I could I have access to whatever knitting supplies I need. I just have it. I've been struggling because I am scrunching all of these like 450 something stitches onto this <laughs> onto this needle. But it's fine. I am almost done. I think I have like I have a handful of sections left. So you start at color A and you fade up to color E and then you start fading back down to color A. So I'll end with color A and I think I'm on color C right now. So I only have a few more sections left to go, um, but it is, it, is, it is quite big, and I'm very excited about it. I think it'll look really cool once it's blocked. Um, all of these yarns are by Queen City Yarns, but I don't have all of the colorway names. I'll have to see if I can find all of the tags. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can find them or not. I'll try. One of my favorite things... Look at this little stitch maker. This little umbrella is from, oh my little elephant tea is cute, but this little umbrella is from Rainy Day Yarns, which was my local yarn store when I lived in Washington, which is where I lived right before I moved into this house. I lived in Washington State, and Rainy Day Yarns was my local yarn store. They're in Gig Harbor, Washington, and Sherry and Susan are the owners, and that was my like home away from home for so long. <laughs> I was there multiple times a week for like the entire day. Um, and this was one of their little in-house stitch markers, the little umbrella. So it's kind of a cute little nostalgic, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's one of my favorite stitch markers is what I was trying to say. I'm really happy with how these colors are fading together. I think they're really pretty. Um, this pink is, is quite bold compared to the other ones, but I think that it's okay. I still like it. Yeah. That's my shawl. I am about to add on another color, so I have a few more fade sections to do, and then a bind off, and then I get to add tassels. So that's very exciting. I like tassels. I've never made them before, but I really enjoy having them on things, so I'm very excited to make that. So those are all of the things that I'm currently working on. I have a couple of things that I am about to cast on. I'm trying to get that shawl off of my needles before April 16th, which is in nine days. <laughs> because on April 16th, um, I am doing a cast on party for the Open Bar Shawl by Callie Monster Knits. It's her newest shawl release. It came out last week or the week before. I can't quite remember. But um, I'm hosting a knit-along at the yarn store, 
and we are having our open bar open bar knit along cast on party on April 16th, which is the day of the pink moon, which is the first full moon since the spring equinox. So it is a three color fingering weight shawl. Yes, three color fingering weight shawl. And the construction is there's kind of your main color and then there's a color that doesn't have a ton of contrast. And then there's a really bright color at the bottom for like a big pop at the border. And I had the hardest time picking my yarn for this project because I work at a yarn store and I have access to hundreds of yarns every day mm -hmm. and I could not decide. So what I did was, after thinking about it for weeks, yesterday while I was at work, I walked around the store and I just grabbed a handful of the skeins that I tend to always stare at while I'm, while I'm working. The ones that always catch my attention, I grabbed a handful of them and I laid them out on my orders table, my processing table, where I kind of like ship orders and wind yarn and all that stuff. And I just let them sit there all day. <laughs> and then I picked one um, and I built my shawl kit off of that. So this is the one that I, that won. This is the one that I grabbed that I ended up deciding was going to be my shawl. And then I just built my kit off of this. So this is wool and vinyl. This is their classic sock rock, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Um, they are such a cute company. All of their stuff is based on rock and roll themes and it's, it's so cute. So this one is called Dreams. And this is going to be the middle color of my shawl. So these are the three colors together. And he's magic. I'm so excited about it. So this is the main color. This is Sheep Graffiti, which again is the owner of the yarn store that I work at. Um, this is called Swimming Upstream, and this is in her socket to you, which is 100% superwash merino. We have our yellows in here. So pretty. And then the bright pop of color that's going to be the border of my shawl is this golden orangey color which is by 29 bridges they are from maryland and this i believe is 75 yep 75 percent super arch merino 25 percent nylon and this color is little miss sunshine so all of these bases are different <laughs> but they're all super wash merino based and i don't think that the different nylon I mean the different nylon content doesn't really bother me it doesn't really affect anything so when it's all together in a shawl you know I'm gonna be able to notice so these are my this is my shawl this is gonna be my open bar shawl and I cannot wait to wind these up and cast these on I'm I'm so excited I'm so happy with this it's gonna be so bright and happy I love it so that'll be fun um, the other thing that I'm casting on probably tomorrow <laughs> is another pair of socks. So Emily Curtis is 108 Stitches on YouTube. She has a podcast and she's Emily Curtis, or M. We Kurt, I think, E-M-W-E-E-C-U-R-T, I think is what she is on Instagram and Ravelry. She is releasing her very first sock pattern tomorrow morning, the 8th, April 8th at 10 a.m., Pacific time, so 1 p.m. Eastern time, and they are called the Almost Argoyle Socks, and I'm very, very excited about them. She's been showing them off on her podcast for a hot minute, and I have been very excited. So I have this Ottoman Indigo's Fiber yarn. This is in the Melancholy colorway, and this is 75% Super Arch Merino, 25% Nylon. Ottoman Indigo Fibers used to be based out of South Carolina but I do not believe they are dying yarn anymore, which is very sad because I love their colors. They're so delicate. So pretty. It's blowing out a little bit. That's a little better right there. To go with it, I have this eggplant. This is also um, by Sheep Graffiti. She has an entire rack of just minis in any color you could ever possibly want so you can just mix and match anything so i got two of these because i want to do the full 
Puffs Heels and Toes in the contrast color, so I did get 40 grams of this eggplant colorway. Um, and I think they look really nice together. This really is the same purple that's in there. I'm gonna have to figure out a better lighting situation. We're learning, we'll get there. So these are gonna be cast on tomorrow. I'm extremely excited for that pattern to come out. It is available on Ravelry. If Ravelry is not accessible to you, um, you can send her an email or message her on Instagram and she said that she will help you get access to that. So I know Ravelry is kind of hit or miss um, and she has not listed it on Etsy yet. My last upcoming project for now <laughs> is um, a hat, a cotton hat. So this is 100% um, cotton by Amano. It's Peruvian cotton. Um, it's a DK weight. This is the tag. And it's just this really cute pink and orange and green color. I am probably just going to be making a ribbed brim stockinette stitch and then rounded crown decreases most likely. I am making this for a family member who recently finished undergoing chemo so her hair is in the process of going back and she wants a nice hat and since she lives in South Carolina and we are going into summertime I decided that cotton would be better than wool for right now so that it's not super hot and sticky and itchy. So I picked a really soft, really soft cotton um, with a fun color pattern. So I'm just going to do a really loose gauge on my stitches so that it's um, really airy and very light so that she can easily wear it whenever she wants to. When we start getting into colder months, if she wants, I can make her a wool or an alpaca hat. I have a ton of alpaca because I love alpaca wool. Um, but we're going into summer it has already been very hot a few days we've been above 80 with like 90 percent humidity already so this will come in handy um i don't know when i'm gonna cast this on yet but i need to have it done by april 20th because that's when i'm going down to visit my parents so i'll be in myrtle beach um april 20th and that's where that's where she is so i need to have it done before i go there um I am trying something new with this pattern. I am using the Addy Rocket needles. So these are square tips instead of rounded. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that on camera, but they're square. And they have those ridges on them. Um, so these are supposed to be more ergonomic. So they're not supposed to worsen or cause wrist pain or tension issues. Um, because you're not you don't have to grip them quite as hard since they're square they're a little bit easier to hold um we recently got these in the store and people have been asking about them a lot and i have never tried them so i bought a pair because i like giving honest opinions and honest reviews so <laughs> i'm gonna try those out with this hat and we'll see how it goes um it'll be interesting to see how it does with the cotton specifically i think i'm also gonna get a size one to use with socks the size one Maybe for a magic loop when I close heels and stuff, or toes. I don't close heels <laughs> when I close my toes. So we'll see. I think that is everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, life is, is kind of chaotic. Hopefully next time my setup will be a little bit better. I need to finish painting this room. I only have half of it painted right now. And then set up my yarn shelves. So hopefully next time I'll have a little bit better lighting. A little bit of a better lighting setup and I'll have my nice pretty purple walls with all of my yarn on them as the backdrop hopefully that'll look really nice um this weekend the yarn store is having a trunk show twin mountain handcrafts is bringing a bunch of their stitch markers I'm very excited about that they've been teasing a couple of things on Instagram but they really aren't sharing a lot of what they're gonna be bringing so it's gonna be a surprise for us too so that's really exciting um, and other than that, I'm, there's not a whole lot, a whole lot going on. It is very cloudy outside today, but it stopped raining, so I think that I'm gonna go take the dogs outside and work on one of my projects. I don't know which one. I'm kind of getting, <laughs> I'm getting to the point where I don't know what project to work on when I have time. 
I usually take just as long deciding as I do working on it. So I'm going to go flip a coin, I guess, or me, me, money, mo, and pick a project. <laughs> oh, my bunny came to say hi. We would like to meet him. This is Azel. She's my bunny. He is very sweet. He is the most likely animal in the house to mess with my yarn. My cat's leaving alone. Ashes has been asleep. Let's see if I can show you without showing you how much of a mess this room is. <laughs> Ashes has been asleep by my yarn pile this entire podcast, and um, Azel is most likely to to mess it up. So, <laughs> anyways. I am so glad that you stopped by to say hi and to hang out with me for a little bit. I hope you got some knitting time. I hope that this was a relaxing 20 something, 25 minutes, 30 minutes to hang out and get to know each other a little bit better. I love meeting new people. So if you want to send me a message or say hi, that would be super cool. I don't remember if I said where you can find me. Um, on Instagram, I'm Wildflower Magic 18. On Ravelry, I'm Wildflower Magic, but I'm not very active on Ravelry. I'm trying to be better, but we'll see. <laughs> but I'm very active on Instagram. Um, and so, yeah, send me a message. Say hi. Tell me what you're working on. Just do the cow with me. Do the open bar shawl with me. <laughs> I'm just really excited to be, to be involved and be part of the community and... Um, to have the opportunity to meet all of you and sit down with you and share this super exciting part of our lives together with other like-minded people because non-knitters don't quite understand. Which my mom and my grandma are probably going to be watching this and they aren't knitters so they're going to think this is really silly but it's fine. <laughs> well it was awesome to spend time with you. I will see y'all next time.